guys this is amazing grace and welcome back again to my channel as you see at the back we are in biking Holland and this is the biking party today they said biking people are uh, still exist here in Norway and today we're going to visit them behind this wall that's a valley a place where the biking leads so I'm going to bring you today with me and be with you guys but before we're going to do that don't forget to like share and leave some comments and of course if you're not yet subscribed you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe and click the notification bell so that you will be updated to all the videos that I'm going to share are you excited because I am excited let's go so this is the entrance of the Viking Alley. Uh, we're, we're going to buy our tickets. This is the Viking Village and the ticket toilet gift shop. And we're going to buy battery. Kale. What's up here? Battery. Hmm? Not that one I like to have. Then you will have. Then a What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you What are you doing? What are you doing? What are Oh my gosh, this is expensive, Stephanie. Sir? You know what it's made of? Stephanie? Stephanie? You know what it's made of? No? So why? Corn. Corn. It's our ticket. Now we are in the pack. Welcome everyone to the Viking town. Again, let's explore the place. And before we are going to follow the guided tour, I want everyone to enjoy the view. And once the guided tour begins, I will not speak anymore. And um, I will let the guide talk and explain everything the history of this place so i hope that you will enjoy you see how they dress up guys is really like what you see in the movie vikings and other types of movies related to vikings and sagas so guys i hope that you will enjoy and to those who haven't subscribed to my channel don't forget to click subscribe and the notification bell so guys let's go around let's take a look before we follow or gathered for the guided tour so yes this is it i'm excited Can you do it? Yeah, it's a good thing. Can you do it? 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 Can you do it?
Welcome inside the Which one's Jan Harold and which one's Andy? No, I don't know why. You see Okay, I have a mustard. Mama, where is it? Where did you film me? Where did you film me? That's also BBC. Discover places like Faroe Island, Iceland, Greenland, North America, and many other places. And they founded cities like uh, Dublin, Kiev, Nogrov, Swansea, and many other cities. And the Viking period is about from 793 to 1066. And now we're gonna go and see some secret behind the Viking success. Yeah, we can go in the sheep and hall. Viking graves on the other side of the valley here, so we have not yet either. 
And you can find, uh, sometimes you can find very nice things in those, like uh, jewelry, backpack, Viking ships, gold and silver, and stuff like this. Yeah. It's always interesting, oh, no Viking grade. Then the Vikings had uh, runes, and before Viking Age they had 24 runes, but the Vikings managed enough, went up to 16. So one rune can be not four different letters. And if you carry one rune, each rune has their own power to give you something. And you can forge and tell with the runes, and also communicate with the gods, and do magic, and stuff like this. Yeah. And the runes come from the god Lin. Then uh, the card on the rune stones that you find all over Scandinavia from Viking time, yeah. you find about over 2,000 of them. Then you also have the rune stick that you write a message on and send it to someone, almost like SMS, but slower, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we find many of those, and one we find under a half in Bergen that is then come home again, and it's almost too long out. We also find nice meshes like this, like this, and stuff like this. And if you come back here later, you can write your names in runes on the table there, and then it's an explanation of the letter what each rune means. And over here, they have a game called Neapatafle, it is the king's table. Like, like kind of a chess type, yeah. so if you like chess, you're also going to like this one. And there was two players, uh, one was for example white and one was brown, and it was made of veil bone. And if you're white, you have to get your king in one of the corners to win the game. And if you're brown, you have to surround the king before he manages to escape in one of the corners to win. And everyone punch like tower in chess. And if you have both sides of a piece, you can take it away. So this you can try to play it later. Yeah. And then we have some moves on these ones. Yeah. Play it just, yeah. You can try to play it. Yeah. And on the outside of the sheet and wall is green paint. And to get this green paint in Viking time, you need pigment from copper. Yeah. And if you're copper and thin, you get bronze. And if you wear bronze jewelry, you can clean. Skin. So that big man used to make the green paint. Yeah. So more difficult it was to make the color, your higher status. And up here is ox blood, it means you die. And because of the dark color, it's because of the higher in the blood. And the red color is the less but so the sheep and all the historical corrected paint there. And in early Viking age, there was many small kingdoms here in Norway. And one kingdom here in former son, the famous king Harald Herfer, who was from his grandfather Harald Goldberg. Yeah, 16 years old, he was king in this area. Then he had to find a king's daughter to marry. So then he heard about Guda Eirik's daughter of Hordaland, the neighbor kingdom of Hordaland, and she was known to be very beautiful and good marriage. So he proposed to her, but she knew she can get better marriage and said, No thanks. But he was only 16 years old, very in love, so he gathered his warriors and started conquering the other small kingdoms. And after 12 years, he managed to get ring, almost like Norway are today. Then he moved his main city further south to Avalsnes, his small plantation, with more farmland, and also the ships got through the islands there up north. So he started tax, and that was called Norwegian, the road north that we get the country name from. And in the end, he proposed again to give the Irish daughter of Hordaland, and get yes, and get five sons with her. So sometimes it's good to not give up. One way to make clothes in Viking time was through the wool. And those wool pieces hanging in here is from a two sheet, so I ran so on the hind area. So the same type as the Viking had called Norwegian spell style, that means the short tail. And in Viking time, you had the sister like this to cut the wool from the sheep. And when you cut the wool, you put it in a pot of water. And then you change the water for many days till the water is clear, thus the wool is clean. And then you hang it to dry. And when it dry, you take down two big cones. Like these ones. And then you hold it opposite way and come out the tanks in the wool. You don't want it in your thread. And also swap over and take on the other side. Then you take a grip like this. And then you pull. And then you pull as far as this as possible. Yeah. Then the long wool coming out. So there you want to spin with the long wool. So I just take a piece like this. 
And in Viking time, they had a drop spindle like this one. You see, a bit ready to spin on. Overlap here. Then, better. So then you take it around the hook on the top, so it's holding. See, then. Then, you put the uh, overlap with the thread, with the wood. And then you spin to catch the thread, yeah. So you wait to catch the top before you move your hand up. So then you can start to move upwards. So quite easy, so this was child work in Viking time. But also other things to do. And if you let go, it crawls in. So then you have to wash it again. And stretch it around. A piece like this, called Nidi Nodi. And has to train on each. And after a while, it stays around this. Then it holds straight, it don't cross back again. So then you can take it over to the loom uh, like this one. And then you can make uh, pieces to make clothes. And also make carpet to isolate or decorate the walls or the floors or status. Like black, uh, brown, grey and white. Yeah. And you prefer the uh, white because you call them from white. Yeah. So maybe that's why we have so many white sheep today. And uh, for example, yellow and green is not a special either because then you can use many different plants to dye those two colors. And you can also use only a copper pot, wire pot to manage to make yellow and green. As a green paint from the sheep and hold is high status but not on the clothes. But uh, if you come to, for example, purple, you go past up in status. Because then you need 5,000 seasoner from Mediterranean called the one kilo wood. And you have to crush the seeds now, so the purple coming out. And you have to export it, so very expensive uh, color. Then you have red and blue. And uh, red, you need madarut. And madarut you also find around Mediterranean. And you have to hold the pot on 55 degrees. If you go too much over, under, you destroy your red color and lost your investment. Yeah. And you didn't have a particular way to measuring the pot in Viking time, except with a finger, or recognize the pot, or experience and stuff like this. And every time you twist them for a way, you buy a new length on the bond. And every time you twist them, you have to put a thread through every time. And the more card you have, the thicker the bond gets. Yeah. So if you didn't follow our FSC, on this show's random color, you can create new patterns. Yeah. It's going to be very interesting to try random colors. Yeah. And from a card meeting, you can make yeah, nice patterns like this ones. Yeah. So you can use, for example, yeah, to decorate the clothes and also belt and stuff like this, and they're quite strong. And you can also do it more advanced, yeah, like this one, for example, you can make dragons and Viking ship and stuff like this. Then you also take the skin of the uh, animals to make waterproof leather tunica and also hoods and furs and shoes and stuff like this. And from scratch to making a tunica, from cutting the wool to cleaning the wool, plant flying, or iron in there. So then you have to burn it to get the iron out of it. And then under the fire, you get this raw iron piece. Then it's good to use, for example, to chop up vegetables, clean the fish, open the rain there or there, take out what you don't can eat. But in the battlefield, you most time have it in the back belt, and if you're about to be killed, pull it out, surprise your enemy, and save your life. Then you have the spear, it's very good weapon, so even on front 12 year old with a spear in the battlefield, you have to be worried about because it reaches long and fast with a spear. And then you have these pieces, so you don't get too deep, so it's fast out to take the next jump. Yeah. So, yeah, you have to be fast, survive. Yeah. And we don't have a specially nice weapon on the table here, but the Vikings had a sometimes very nice weapon, uh, like decorated with gold and silver and carved and stuff like this. Yeah. And uh, many famous weapons is mentioned in sagas with names. For example, this one called Iron Song because it looks like it has a form of iron. And uh, yeah, you can make names like this. And then you have horse hair and stuff like this to make it nice. Then you have the long axe. It's the only two hands weapons that find from Viking time. And you get enormous force behind. And that was most time used by the head. There's a protect the chieftain or the earth or the kings. And if you have a Shield ball, you can reach over the shield ball, over to the enemy. You can also take down the rider on the horse. And if you're bad one day, for example, you can take this way. Yeah. Yeah, no protection there. 
And in 1066, the standing of a shirker on Stanford Bridge in York, alone and holds the whole advancing army back to the king across the bridge with this weapon. And since he's berserker, he needs to have a bear skin on, and he has a ritual that get the animal force aside and get total on my And uh, you think, look now, and then call Hanbane to help with this. Then we have the sword, a uh, blacksmith, but also it looks like medical, to make a flexible sword like this. And it has to be flexible, if not, it only break if it hits uh, hit something hard. Instead, it just fight break. And from here to there, it's no of the blade, it's something to sharp in place on the blade. And the reason is, it's the piece more recess. Now I'm gonna hit on it, and you can try to see. Stand still there. Yeah, so there you want to try to hit your enemy because then hit straightest and deepest. If you don't stab. Then you have the groove in the middle here. So when you penetrate it, you get air in to get easier out. Yeah, and also take down the weight on the sword. And the value of the sword in Viking time was six horses or six slaves. And in Norway alone we find over 3,500 swords. And we find them all the time. And the last one we find now in Stavanger was decorated with gold and silver in dragon style very nice sword and the sword is very personal as you often bury with your sword so if you open a viking grave you often find a sword yeah. and the good thing with the sword you have the balance point close to your hands you can move much faster than other weapons and if we come here we're aiming against you we're going to hide behind the shield good to have in the back of the deck that was a viking body people are living like a viking and they have Tour. Yeah, the bay. And this is a copy of a boat, a little bit north from here, in the island of Yorkshire. But if you want some gold and silver, you need a ship, and you need a sail, and you need to go raiding. And the most magnificent and largest Viking ship was Ormen the Lange, Ola Tryggvason's ship. And Ormen the Lange means Worm the Long. And on the highest calculation, it was 55 meter long and 8 meter wide. And the head was both plated snake head. <laughs> okay. The third bar is Dradan. The third is Hola. Dradan. Butonga lang na ho. Oh. Oy, oy, oy. Nasty. Little girl. Think. Yeah, uh, this field you see here, it's a game that Viking had called Knut Leiker. And the Knut was the ball and Leiker was the play. And the ball was felted with a wooden piece inside, so the ball was quite hard. So you mentioned that uh, someone was hit by the ball and, yeah, and died, yeah. <laughs> the, the ball was quite hard. Then you had a wooden club, a wooden stick, and to score, you had to shoot over the crossbar between the posts. You didn't allow to throw it in with your hand, you had to shoot it in with a wooden club. And there was big wrestling to get hold of the ball. And this, they play on the grass, but also on the ice. And uh, this is the same game that they think that they bring to North America, so American Indian also maybe start to play. And as you see, maybe this inspired many other ball games. Then you can go down to the gods, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah here we're trying to make some god figures. Yeah, they're much nicer on the other side, on the top there. Uh, yeah. The Vikings had over 70 gods, and each god was kind of all nature power. So you sacrifice on a sacrifice stone, and you hire sacrifice, <laughs> you're more likely that you get what you ask for. And today we have a great volunteer. Yeah. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the place name here, called Gudvangen, means the place of the gods. So it was most likely a sacrifice place in Viking time. Yeah. Then we have the god Njord in the middle, because he had the same name as the fjord behind, Nari Fjord of the Njord. And he was the god of the sea, also god of fortune and trade. So that's why I think a little bit higher up here was some... Then Odin is sacrificed one of his eyes to a magical well called Mimir's well. Give him our knowledge and wisdom. So for that you can sacrifice the Odin. 
Then he had his raven, Hugin and Mugin, to fly around the world to spy for him. And he had a horse called Sleipne with eight legs, can run very fast. <laughs> yeah. And over here we have the goddess Freya. She's the goddess of love, but also goddess of war. And Friday is after her. So when the Valkyria fly over the battlefield to take up the bravest fallen warriors, allowed so to come up to the gods. Yeah. Then Freya shows first half of them. She wants the Arnabal, but Odin, he wants the bloodthirsty. So the gathering warriors then battle Ragnarok against the giant in Jotunheimen. Uh, yeah, they are gods and warrior. And since Freyos is goddess of love, it's not a bad place to come to after your dead either. <laughs> yeah. And over here we have the god Frey. He's the fertility god for men, as you can see. <laughs> if you need that, you sacrifice to him. Yeah. And also growths in the nature, nature and stuff like this. Yeah. <laughs> and over here we have Loki, he's formed like a snake, so he's a shapeshifter. He's normally a human shape with long hair, yeah. And he can turn into a, yeah, a chicken, or me, or one of you, or anyone he likes. Yeah. So if you want to do something sneaky, something conspiracy game, some trickstery, you can ask Loki for help, yeah. yeah. And on the sea, the waves on the sea, see seven sisters. And then you have the goddess of the mountain, Skade. So you had kind of a god for every nature power, so you sacrifice two, like all ancient culture had, kind of, yeah. And Sweden, in Viking Age, they had a kingdom inside there, and there they had bad harvest. So then they decide to sacrifice to the gods. Then they had a wooden bowl, and then they take uh, blood from the chickens and uh, spread it on the god figures. And also mead and stuff like this. But it didn't help, they didn't get better harvest. So then they had to rise to sacrifice, so then they start to sacrifice bigger animals, like cows and horses and stuff like this. And it still didn't get better harvest, so then they had to rise to sacrifice more. Yeah, so then they start to sacrifice humans, the other slaves, and it still didn't get better harvest, so then they wonder what they can give to the gods to get good harvest. Yeah, then they think about the greatest sacrifice they can give is the king's self. Yeah, so then it's then that they sacrifice the king and then they get good harvest. Yeah, at least it stands so. Yeah. So that I had. Hope you like my guide at all, and thank you for following me around. Yeah, thank you. Wow. Thank you. Yes. Thank you.
the next destination and thank you again for watching bye everyone